In Florida, the floating mats of hyacinths and water lettuce provide warmth as well. The angling endeavor within the entanglement is a challenge, but the reward is well worth the effort. Look at that. I love punch and matted vegetation. Hello everyone, Kim Stricker here, and welcome to another Hook and Look Splash, a splash of fishing information from an underwater point of view. A few years back, my friend Glenn Brown taught me a thing or two about punching water hyacinths mats in Florida. One point in particular that I want to share with you. Ooh, there's a good one. <laughs> I told you, I'd rip his lip, all he's got to do is nibble. <laughs> oh, that's a dandy. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. Without question, Glenn's knowledge of the composition of these mats was spot on. From the top of the mat to underneath the mat, as well as the growth off the bottom below the canopy, or should I say, the lack thereof. Glenn was acutely aware of the irregularities that held pigs like this. So as persistent as I pitched, with the same fortitude, I picked his brain. And one thing Glenn briefly mentioned really struck a note. Now, do you try to target the thickest hyacinths? Yeah, I do. Big, thick patch like that? The thick clump, yeah. The higher clumps. What was that? The higher clumps. Again? The higher clumps. The higher clump. Well, I've got to say that this proved to be the deal. And if you watch this entire video, I'm going to show you why from below the surface. When venturing underneath the matted canopy, you begin to acquire a feel as to what the bass perceive within its rooted foliage. The plants themselves, as well as their hydroponic root systems, provide food and shelter for a variety of small aquatic organisms, including minnows and crayfish. But more important to us anglers is that floating mats of entangled vegetation provide cover and haven for largemouth bass as well, positioning the fish within a confined area. Peering from the deck of a boat, it's hard to visualize the degree of structure descending downward beneath the floating canopy. First, it's important to comprehend that there's a distinct difference between the root systems of each plant type. Pennywort, for instance, has the shortest roots, which develop in balls from the plant's lanky stalks and remain relatively close to the surface. Water lettuce grows as small heads, with feathery roots descending approximately six inches below its foliage. However, water hyacinths Another free-floating plant grows taller with a root system equally as long as its height. So keep in mind, and this is key, the taller the hyacinth, the longer the root system descending below. Now with all that said, take into consideration that Bass Fishing 101 tells us that bass are edge-oriented. So it's plausible that these Florida largemouth will indeed relate to the interface created from one plant root system to another type. There, oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, man. Do, you, do you know how much fun that is? Oh, it's a blast. That's why I do it all the time. That is such a riot. Jerking them out of this stuff is somewhat of an art. And for the benefit of you viewers, I want to point out how this catch was a prime example of what Glenn stated previously. Let's begin with lure placement. Here you can see a thick clump of tall hyacinths. On previous pitches, I was unable to penetrate the heart of the thick clump. So I then punched my lure right on the edge where the taller hyacinths meet the shorter water lettuce. From under the mat, there's a defined edge of longer dark hyacinth roots here, adjacent to the shorter water lettuce roots. And the bass use this dangling root edge in the same manner they would relate to a clump of weeds growing on the bottom. First, I work the rage bug on the bottom. 
which kicks up a cloud of bottom sediment, drawing attention. But most importantly, it wasn't until I raised my tip, lifting the bug to the ceiling of the water lettuce, that I get the strike. Thus confirming that the bass have their backs up tight against the warm canopy, securely positioned next to the edge of longer hyacinth roots. You had that right. Well, thanks for sharing that with me. There you go. Hey. With me and the viewers. <laughs> well, I know you guys from Michigan don't get to catch them like that all the time. <laughs> Especially this time of year. It's, it's, it's kind of chilly right. up there. Got that right. There's no doubt when you're fishing this heavy cover that you've got to have the right equipment. And what I start with is a seven and a half foot punching rod. This is it's like a cue stick to be able to jerk those fish out of those hyacinths. But then you've noticed on the end of my butt here, I've got a cushion. This is a, a rod butt cushion. It's very light, durable, and all you do is slide it on the end of your rod, and that protects your ribs when you're ripping those fish out. And then for my rig, 65 pound Smackdown braided line. You gotta have that heavy, heavy line to cut through that grass and yank those fish out. And I first put a weight stop. And then I put on the weight. This is a ounce and a quarter heavy turgrade tungsten weight. I slide that up and then a five aught heavy duty hackney flipping hook. And then the bait we're using is the rage tail structure bug. When you pull it out of the package, the legs are connected. You want to pull them apart. They're made that way to protect the integrity of the tail so it doesn't bend or anything. That way you get all the action. Something that's a huge help nowadays. And I mean, you know it as well as I know it. When you're fishing this kind of stuff, you get them power poles on the pack. Yeah. You know, here we pulled up right here. We dropped the power poles and you can sit right here. You know, we don't have a lot of wind today, but we've got a little where it's gonna blow your boat around. Sure. And we can park right here Probably sit not. here and fish this mat as long as we want and not get blown down the lake. So when you got a lot of wind here, you got to kind of look for the right specific types of mats. You know, we had a whole bunch of different vegetation. You know, we had hyacinths, water lettuce, pennywort. What we ended up having to do was look for the mats that hadn't moved. You know, it had a lot of wind the prior week and moved a lot of stuff around. And that's when we had to key in on the ones that were really stuck in the high drill that we knew hadn't been blown around where there was a bunch of grass under it. You know, you got to have an open pocket of water underneath those mats in order to catch those fish. If you scroll down below the video description, you'll find a complete list of the products featured in this video, including links for purchase. So please check that out and thanks for watching.